Welcome to the first entry in the Homebrewing from Zero to Hero series. Like many hobbies, brewing can go as far as you want to take it. In this series, you'll learn how to take the finest hops and grains and water and yeast and turn it into liquid gold. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about making alcohol with as little equipment and effort as possible. Taking that first step into the great unknown, putting together things that you have lying around in your kitchen or your cupboard or your neighbor's cupboard and making alcohol. Now, if you're already a home brewer, this video may seem like sacrilege. Please leave your angry comments in the form of a haiku. But if you're like I was when I first learned this, this will seem like pure magic. And I want to share that magic. But first, we have to cover some basics. Because some of you will probably be wondering, the four beers that I have here are Dry Irish Stout, English Dark Mild, Hoyt Beer, and just an ordinary bitter. Not a best bitter, not an extra special bitter. Just ordinary. By the way, I've named the Dark Mild, Hello Darkness Mild Friend. Proud of that one. Carrying on. A long time ago, a friend explained to me what his father passed on to him and his father's 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 He said, Are you old enough to be drinking? Wait, no, that's not it. He said, Alcohol is just sugar with water and yeast minus oxygen. That's all we need. Don't worry about that oxygen part. We'll get to that. For our sugar and water, we're gonna be using grape juice and common bread yeast for our yeast. Expired nonetheless. Living on the edge. Other juices work well. Berry juices work well. Don't use orange juice. Don't use Don't. orange Don't. juice. Warning, do try this at home. Now wait a minute, what if I want something stronger? Okay, okay, put down the mouthwash. We'll brew a second batch, but this one will fortify, which just means add sugar. If you're a fortified wine fan and didn't know, well, I'm sorry you had to hear this way. Now, we can do this any number of ways. We could add white sugar, brown sugar, honey, agave, honey, maple syrup, honey, juice concentrate, anything that's gonna increase the sugar content. Just make sure it has sugar and not artificial sweeteners. Many of those are already in a form of of alcohol, they're just not the kind you want to drink. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out the Amazon reviews for sugar-free gummy bears. It's okay. I'll wait. I'll be using honey. Terroir, single origin, coffee blossom, local organic honey. Why? Because I have it. Now, normally, whatever sugar you would be adding, you would want to sterilize first. We can do this by boiling it in a little water for eight minutes and letting it cool. However, fun fact! Did you know honey is sterile? There's the odd anthrax spore, which is harmless for adults, but bacteria can't survive in honey. If stored properly at the right moisture content, the sugar crystals form little microscopic barbed wire. It's a bacterial death trap. This honey, however, was stored on the exhaust manifold of a leaking submarine. So you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna take a couple of gravity readings so we can calculate the final ABVs. It's also good to leave a little headspace in the bottle for the yeast to build up in. So what is a hydrometer? A weighted buoy with some gradations on it. Now if you can see here, there's a couple of different units. There's bricks, gravity, plato, they're all interchangeable. We'll be using gravity. Now this is calibrated, so in just regular old water, it'll be at one flat here. But as you add more sugar, the liquid's gonna be more dense. And as it gets more dense, this is gonna wanna flow out of that dense liquid more. The more sugar, the higher this will pop out, the higher the reading. Now as you convert the sugar to alcohol, alcohol is less dense. This will go down and we can take that final reading. Simple calculation, we can figure out how much of the sugar turned to alcohol. This juice has no sugar added, and more importantly, has 33 grams of carbohydrates, all of them sugar. 1.058. Not too bad. Let's fortify the other one and measure it. Okay. And 72. Bit more sugar to start with in this one. For reference, I added six ounces single origin fancy honey, don't judge me, to the fortified bottle. Mm, this might actually just work. It's time to add our yeast. Just about a teaspoon for each. It's crucial at this point to have everything sanitary. The most common cause of premature sobriety is infection. Shake it up to disperse the yeast. Try to get the clumps broken up. What a mess. All right. Our yeast is in, our wine is ready to start fermenting. That's it. Now we can just do not just wait. <clears throat> oh, uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. 
what we have here is a ticking time bomb. It's got a very long fuse, but left alone, this will explode. Once the yeast uses all the oxygen, they'll start making alcohol, but that's not all. It will also make carbon dioxide, which, being a gas, is going to want to take up more space. But, 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 there isn't more space, so it'll build up as pressure, and yeast still perform. Under pressure. These little guys party until they pass out from their own alcohol. Hmm. So, how do we diffuse the bomb? We need to let the pressure out without letting oxygen back in. And there's a few ways to do that. The simplest and most dangerous, dangerous. way is just to crack the lid a few times a day. Of course, if you forget to do it or your yeast produce a lot of CO2 quickly, that could be a problem. Another way to make an inlet so small that the pressure that the yeast generates constantly creates flow out and air can't flow back in. So one way would be to tie a balloon over this and prick it with a pin. The best way is to use an airlock. Now these will run you a couple bucks. The idea is put a little bit of water in, sanitize water, and the CO2 can build up pressure, push its way through this water around the corner, bubble up, and escape through the top. But air, one atmosphere of pressure, can't push back down through, overcome this, and get back into your wine. You can also make your own airlock. All you need to do is drill a hole into the cap, glue in a piece of hose, and then run that hose down into a bucket or a cup of bleach water. The CO2 will build up in the hose, bubble out through the bleach water, and escape. So back when I said we were lucky that these were leaking grape juice all over, these caps already let out pressure. And if you're ever not sure about your setup, just give it a good squeeze and you should see the level rise. If you're not able to move the liquid inside by squeezing it, there's potential there for a bomb. Right. Well, now that we've got our bomb diffused, we can just let these bubble away and wait and check back in as they start fermenting. <clears throat> I think I'll just leave this on the counter until someone says something. Hmm. Thank you.
to The Pouring Hour. I'm your host, Jim Poorman. Today we're going to be pouring some freeze-distilled wine into a bottle. Isn't that nice? This is the result of the first freeze distillation. I'll mark off the volume of liquid retrieved, but we can do better once again for the second time. And there we have it, twice distilled. Let's look at the final result, shall we? Coming in at 0% alcohol, your kids' juice boxes with the addition of bread yeast, 7.6%. Organic single origin. Honey. To the fortified wine, got to 9.5%. But we didn't stop. We there. went all the way. Freeze distilled once. Freeze distilled Did twice. a lot of math. And 25% alcohol. You could probably go one more time and get that even higher, but your yield is going to go down each time you do it. So bear that in mind. That's how I got started brewing. And if you were like me and thought this was cool, it could lead to one of the most fun and rewarding hobbies of your life. Flavor profiles. None of the wines are nearly as sweet as the original juice, but they do still have a nice, soft, sweet quality kind of left behind. I wouldn't call it wine so much. It tastes like a grape cider, if that makes sense. Not in a bad way. It's 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 actually quite tasty. I might explore this concept further. It's 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 actually very tasty. The one flaw that I find with the regular fermented and the fortified is that the bread yeast didn't fall out of solution very well. So there is a slight yeasty character to it. it comes through. Not the end of the world. The freeze distilled wine though, the yeast clean up out of that and has this beautiful tart acidic flavor to it just jammy soft honey flavors with a nice heat from the alcohol not overpowering or, or harsh just delightful if you do this let me know how yours turned out and if you want to take it to the next level i'll be doing a whole series on how to brew the next one will be partial mash maybe it's already done maybe i'm already drinking it time paradox <sighs> Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers! Mm -hmm.